Hello. Hello. So, uh, I'm now going to talk to a man for whom I have enormous respect. He is not a critic, he's a reviewer. He's been described as the man who knew more about Broadway than anyone else. He's written definitive biographies of Arthur Miller and uh, Tennessee Williams. And his reviews and writings about show business are the... Get out! What are you doing here? <sighs> Rouse! Rouse! Not you, Cat. John La. John, good to How see you. I'm well. Nice to see you. Uh, John and I have a rather interesting connection because, John, <laughs> you married uh, one of my ex-wives, I think. I, I have indeed. <laughs> you married Connie Booth. For about 35 years now we've been... Oh, been come on, on. Yeah. it's not it goes that back long. That far. Is it really? Yeah. How wonderful. And I want to tell you something. I think you know this. I've told you before. Your dad was a great star. T tell us a little bit about him. Well, my father was... The English people would know him as uh, the Cowardly Lion and the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. But he had a, a phenomenal uh, run uh, as a performer and was very, very... In his day, was one of the great low comedians of the first half of the 20th century. When he died in 1967, his, his face was on the cover, on the, on the front page of the, it was front page news of the Times. And when I went to write, a, this pertains to writing about theater. Yeah. When I wrote his book, I realized that nothing that was written about him bore any real relation to who he was. And so part of what got me on the road to writing about theater was trying to leave a better narrative about theater and theatricals to carry that knowledge further and uh, expand it. I make a distinction between reviewing yes. and criticism. Reviewing is, as it now is, is a consumer function. Uh, the, the, the articles, such as they are, are really just to tell the reader whether they should go and see it. Well, that's part of what criticism is, but really what criticism is, is to put a play, a play is meant to stimulate thought. And from my point of view, criticism really extends that into the world. It thinks about the play and puts it in the context of the culture, psychology, all sorts yeah, of things. Yeah. Whereas a review is in the context of no context. Oh, I see what you, you mean. see. What I'm saying. If you like when you well, write. When I read about what people write about your pieces, they always talk about the depth that they have much more depth than most what uh, well, portraits. That's part of the. Well, for 20 years, I was the drama critic of The New Yorker, and that's the sort of gift of having space and time. Most reviews are written in a very short space. You can't really think no, in the way, way I'm no, talking no, no, about no, in 800 words. Can't do it. But you do really long thought pieces well, about some of the long, great stars. You can, you can get something going, yeah. and you can have an idea or express an idea in... Uh, in uh, <laughs> Thank you. In, in, Don't drink it. That's very nice. Good. In the 1,500 words. But it, it's basically a point of view. I mean, I think uh, I, a critic, and I'm not talking just about myself, but uh, Eric Bentley, uh, Kenneth Tynan, they are really in the uh, illumination business. Yes, yes, you're, right. You're there to ha stimulate thought. And you're there to have an argument, perhaps, but it's uh, not to dismiss. The most important thing about a critic is that he loves the medium that he's criticizing. That and that he knows something about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot that bit. <laughs> yes, but you, you know, I, I think it's Christopher Hampton said, to ask a working writer what he thinks of critics is like asking a lamppost what he thinks of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, the thing I object to in that joke is working writer because there, I think there's, only, there's just good writing and bad writing, mm -hmm. and, and elegance or eloquence comes in, in any genre, mm -hmm. any genre. Mm. 
Yeah. And my objection to a lot of the, re the reviewing is that the people who are passing judgment uh, are book learned, but they haven't ever written anything. They haven't made anything. They've never done, written a joke mm. or a play, or had an acting lesson. They have no idea of, of they, they can see something. They can know it's good, but they don't know why it's good. That's exactly the point. I'm so glad you make that and, point. But you see, that's part of the differentiation between most of the really important critics on either side of the Atlantic have all slept on both sides of the bed. They've made theater and yes. they've uh, written about it. They know what the process is. Finally, going back to creativity, how much creativity do you think there is in reviewing or, or critiquing? Well, it? as you write in your book on creativity, criti creativity is play. And my job is to sit in front of the play and let it happen on yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. play with it. And when I sit in front of a, in, in a typewriter, I'm playing, I'm discovering it again, I'm reimagining it, and I'm playing with the ideas and seeing how they resonate with uh, me and in the yeah, culture. Yeah. So in that yeah. sense, you're starting with a blank page and you're building up a story which describes what you've, you've seen, but also pushes it out and paints a larger picture. So in that sense, you're creating uh, uh, a narrative yeah. which has, uh, hopefully, at its best, the possibility of entertaining and showing people something that they didn't know before. Yeah. And that's what is creative. And I now see, just listening to you now, why all the people writing about your writing talk about its depth. Well, that's Thank you, nice. John. Uh, pleasure. Really Keep enjoy my it. love to Connie I, tonight. I, I, I,